Um, so we're going to talk about scratch memory. Um, uh, let's see. So scratch memory and Coco. So uh, we want to talk about um, two types of use cases for scratch memory, um, team uh, and thread private scratch pads. Uh, and uh, um, team and thread private memory, and then um, uh, using scratch memory to reduce global memory access, so caching uh, commonly uh, used data between the threads. Um, and we want to recognize when to use scratch memory and, and how to use it and what we need to add um, in terms of like barriers and, and, and different things like that. So. Cocos offers two levels of scratch space. Um, so level zero is it's limited in size, but it's um, uh, but it's very fast. And then level one allows for large allocations, uh, but it's uh, equivalent to high band, uh, bandwidth memory and, and, and latency and bandwidth. And so you can think of level zero as a kind of like a, a manual, a manually managed, uh, a user managed L1 cache and then level one uh, being kind of like the nearest mass storage. Um, so like I said, we have two use cases we'll talk about. Uh, so this team or thread private memory, you can think about if you have like, um, if you need a certain amount of temporary storage per work item. So say you need like each um, team or each thread needs its own local matrix, um, something like that. Um, we can use a scratch space to allocate that memory. And the, the big advantage would be is that without scratch memory, you would need to pre-allocate uh, pre memory for these local workspaces, uh, which would scale on the number of work items you have. Whereas with scratch space, we can allocate team or thread local memory, which will scale in the number of teams uh, or threads we have, which can be much smaller. Uh, and then the second use case, which we'll actually focus our example on, is this uh, manually managed cache. And so we can, uh, if we have frequently used data by all threads of a team, we can um, explicitly cache that data uh, and read that from scratch memory uh, instead of uh, always going, each thread always going to global memory um, and, and doing global memory reads. And what this does is this exposes um, specific on-core scratch, uh, uh, scratch spaces like the NVIDIA GPU shared memory. And I believe that it's the only way for us to uh, expose that within Cocos. Um, so yeah, so we'll discuss a use case here use uh, uh, with the manually managed cache. And both of these, the team thread private memory and the manually managed cache, they use the same uh, uh, mechanics and API. In Cocos, there's just a slightly different motivation, but it's it's all the same. Um, uh, it's all the same uh, interface in Cocos. So we'll look again at this uh, uh, sort of matrix vector product um, that most of the tutorial examples use. And so we'll have something. Here's like a slice of a larger problem where we have like our rows being the number of quadrature points and our columns being the vector size. And then we'll multiply each row by this. Uh, vector B, and then we'll store the result. And so, like I said, that's a, a problem like that. It's like a, typically a slice of a larger problem where we have a certain number of elements um, that for each of those, we have this matrix vector product. Um, so we'll want to parallelize this. And so there's a few different options. So we could, um, we could have each thread handle an element. Uh, each thread could handle a quadrature point or each thread could handle um, an I. Uh, but just kind of following all the examples and the last example we did, we'll, we'll, we'll use, uh, we'll parallelize over the elements and we'll use a team, uh, team policy on the elements. So we have our team policy on the total number of elements. And so this is what our, um, our team policy kernel will look like. Um, so again, the team members, uh, each team has an element. Um, and so then in, in the interior, we then will use a team thread range over the number of quadrature points uh, as our second level of parallelism. And then inside here is where we'll do our reduction, which computes the uh, matrix vector product. 
And we could add a third level of parallelism and the, uh, the example and the tutorial does, um, but it doesn't change the, app, like the, the mechanics of the scratch space. So just for simplicity, we'll, keep, we'll just keep this serialized over vector size. And so what we can notice here is that um, every, in, the most, in, in the interior loop over this vector size, every single thread accesses the same vector B. So there's just one vector B that every thread accesses, and that's independent of the quadrature. And so what's happening then is that for each, uh, for each team, uh, threads are launched over quadrature points, and then every single thread goes back to global memory to read the same exact values in B. So the idea is that we could cache B um, and avoid all these global, um, all these global uh, lookups in global memory. Um, and so kind of why that might gain us performance is if we think about each team, each team has their uh, shared memory scratch pad. So this is a team, these are all the threads of a team, and then there's this shared memory that they can all access. Um, and so the idea is instead of having each of these threads go to the exact same place in the global memory, we can copy this data into the scratch memory, and then these are quick accesses for each of the threads um, of the team. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, the reason this works, so accessing, uh, especially in level zero scratch memory is usually much faster than global memory. This will be archi uh, architecture dependent, which we'll see in the example um, and, and, and the performance results from the example. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so accessing data in level zero should be much faster than every thread going back to global memory. Uh, like I said, GPUs have a separate dedicated uh, cache um, that they can access. And uh, while CPUs don't, programming with scratch memory um, results in you, a cache aware memory access pattern. So you can think about it as like a user managed L1 cache. Um, so the important concept here is when a team reads the same data multiple times, it's better to load into scratch memory and read from there. There is, uh, there are exceptions, uh, which we'll, I'll, I'll go over briefly. Um, but for, for the most part, it, it's going to be, uh, if not faster, at least comparable. Um, so that's kind of the, the scratch memory as, uh, uh, as a manual cache. Uh, the other the other one that we talked about is the scratch memory uh, for temporary uh, workspace. And so the scenario again is you have a temporary workspace of size W that each work item will need. And so without scratch memory, you'd have to pre-allocate for every work item, you'd have to pre-allocate a workspace of size W, but N can be very large. Uh, whereas with scratch memory, you can have Cocos pre-allocate this W for each team or thread and so then the total memory that you'll need is uh, relative to the number of teams you have or the threads you have and not the total number of work items, which can be a significant, uh, um, a significant decrease in uh, total memory. Uh, you can do this per thread or per team. And I'll go into a second exactly how Cocos, how, how we call these and, and set this up. Um, but basically, you can have a, a certain amount of workspace that you want uh, per individual thread or per team. And you can use level 0 and 1. And you can use all of these concurrent, concurrently. So um, uh, yeah. So um, and basically, the, the takeaway is if an al algorithm requires this temporary workspace, uh, it, it's almost always going to be beneficial to use Coco scratch memory. Again. Uh, as, especially if n is, is much larger than the number of teams of threads. Uh, so how this looks like inside Cocos is we can take our team policy here and we can call this set scratch size, which returns a team policy. We tell it the level that we want to set our, uh, our, that we want this scratch uh, space allocated in. And then we tell it, do we want it per team or per thread? And then we give it the number of bytes that we will need per team or per thread. Um, and so like I said, you can use per team, per thread, or you can use both. So the set scratch space can take both in as an argument and um, you can allocate that way. And then you can use level zero 
and one at the same time. And so this isn't even as expanded as far as possible. So we could we could call set scratch space on our policy for level zero per team and per thread, and then call it again for level one per team and per thread. Um, so we can use all those combinations. So then what we'll need to do in Cocos is we'll need to tell Cocos how much scratch memory we'll need. Um, and then we'll need, to uh, we'll need to create our scratch memory views inside our kernels. And so what this is gonna look like is we have our team policy here. Um, and what we'll do is we'll de define a scratch memory view type. And so here we have a, a 1D view of doubles and we hand it, or we, we template it on the scratch memory space that we get from the execution space. And so what this does is it tells, uh, it tells Cocos that we want this type to be a view, but in the scratch memory space. Um, and then that view, this is independent of level zero, level one here. Um, this doesn't have to be a 1D view. You can use uh, multiple dimensions if you like, um, and you can use different types here. Uh, but anyway, so we just, uh, we define a scratch memory view type, and then we need to compute before we launch our kernel, we need to compute how much scratch memory we're gonna need um, inside of our kernel. And so here we have uh, this, there's a static function for this view type called schmem size. And so basically it's gonna take in the dimensions of our view. And so the, we need to use this function um, to calculate the bytes because there could be, this takes into account any alignment, like any like alignment issues that you would have like with using different types here. Um, so you you could you could manually calculate how much memory you would need, but you you could be missing some um, some some additional data that's going to need to be like uh, for for aligning these this all this data that you're using. And so we can just use this schmem size uh, from the view type, give it the dimension, and then that'll give us the amount of memory we need. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, the amount of memory we need for a scratch view of this type. And so then once we calculate how much memory we need, we then need to tell the policy how much scratch memory we need. So we're going to use level zero. And so we'll take our policy here and you can do this in line in the parallel four call because this will return a team policy. Um, but you, you, you have your policy here and then you want to set your scratch size for level zero to this many bytes per team. And again, you can use per thread here if, if you're if you're using if if you're using um, this inside a, a team uh, team thread range. Uh, but here we'll be just use we'll just need the memory per team. And so then inside of our functor here, um, we can then create our scratch view from the scratch memory. And so we have a, our scratch view type. We'll call it scratch. And then this is sort of like an unmanaged view. Um, where we hand it this, uh, the team member has access to the, the team scratch. Uh, and so we, we hand it this team scratch and then the size of our view. And then this team scratch keeps up with where we are in our shared uh, in, in, our, in our scratch space. So we can request multiple of these views and this team scratch will, will It'll, it knows how many we've already requested and it will point to the right place in memory for creating this view. And so that's the basics of how to create the view. So then how do we use it? So again, here's, we've just created our view with our team scratch at level zero with our, um, the size of the view. And so then we can use this scratch instead of using B and having these global memory access, we can access the scratch memory here. And since, and that'll be the same for every quadrature point. So the only thing we need to do is load in B to the scratch memory here. And then once that happens, again, it's independent of quadrature points. We can just use that scratch memory every single time. So how do we load that in? So we could, um, we could have one of the threads loaded in. So we could say for team rank zero, then uh, I'll load in the vector. This works, but it's, uh, in serial, so it's 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 not going to be that fast. Um, so we could think about another option. We could think, well, I could have each thread load in an entry, but this doesn't work because the team size is not necessarily going to be the vector size. Um, 
So what we're going to do instead is we'll use a team vector range and we'll just launch a team vector range as our, our second uh, nested parallel loop and we'll launch it over the vector size and we'll say load in this B vector into scratch. There's going to be, let's see, uh, we'll use team vector. You could use team thread range if you wanted to, but since this is our only level of nested parallelism to load in the scratch, we might as well exploit all that we have and use the team vector range. Um, so anyway, so, so yeah, so we create our scratch view, we load in our global memory into scratch, and then now we, when we need when we want to access the vector B, we just use the scratch base, which is only going to look up in shared memory and not in global memory, or in scratch memory, not in global memory. There's only one thing to do here, which is um, a thread with this team vector range, a thread could um, load in a value to scratch, be done, and then move on to this loop here, where it will attempt to access every entry in scratch. Um, uh, and so there's a potential that some threads could be uh, that could start using the scratch before all threads are done writing the scratch. So it's very important that we have a team barrier here after we load our scratch um, view um, so that every team, every thread will sync up before going into scratch and, and trying to use the scratch memory. Um, so that team barrier will be important. And then the exercise, you'll, you'll need to insert a team barrier into the right spot. Um, so yeah, so we can go ahead and head to the exercise. Uh, it's exercises team scratch memory, where we'll be doing exactly what we've done in the slides here. Um, we'll have the, it, it's the same setup as the previous exercises, and we're going to cache our X vector for each element. Um, and so yeah, so we'll basically go through that process, and then we can vary the problem size in the rows to see how that affects, but we'll show some performance data after. Uh, that. So yeah, so if we want to go ahead and start um, the exercise, yep, we'll give a couple minutes to do that. And slide that shows uh, the performance. And so here, exercise seven, um, the, this comes from a different uh, repository, but exercise seven, uh, the O7s here are with scratch space and the O6 are the team vector loop uh, example from earlier without scratch space. And, um, and so on three different uh, architectures. And so we see that for CPU um, for, and for KNL, we don't really gain much uh, because the standard at uh, the standard hardware, uh, sorry, the standard hardware caching um, is doing a good enough job that we're, we're not really seeing any gains from uh, manually caching. Uh, and there's actually, the left here. So this is a fixed problem size. And so the number of rows in the slides was the quadrature point. Um, and so as the number of rows gets smaller, the vector size gets bigger. So the scratch space view is larger, but we're reading it uh, fewer times. Um, and so what happens here is that we're, we're, we're reading it a very small number of times. So the copying the data into Scratch is actually causing worse performance for Scratch space, um, but that's kind of a that's just kind of the extreme. But for the most part, they are you know there's not many gains to be made on on GPU. There is, and so um, we see that we can gain a a, a, sig a significant amount. But at some point, we we follow the same pattern as with CPU. And what's happening here is, again, to the left, the scratch space view is uh, very large. And to the right, it gets very small. And so the, to the left here, we, we run out of actually level zero cache. Um, so this, this is a difference in the different architectures. They don't have the same amount of uh, level zero and level one cache. Um, but we have gains here, but then we meet up. And, and this is because as, it gets, as the size of the views gets smaller, the uh, L1 cache kicks in on the GPU. And so then we just start to see the same behavior that manually caching is not uh, really that much more beneficial than what the hardware is doing. Um, but you'll notice it's, it's roughly the same and it's actually slightly better. Known. So it's, it's not degrading performance um, at all to use Scratch Space, but as a manual cache, but the effectiveness 
it's not always going to see huge gains in a sense. So it's very specific to the hardware and to the problem. Um, yeah, so just in summary, uh, scratch memory uh, can be used with team policies to provide team or thread private memory. Um, you can do uh, per work item temporary storage or manual caching. Uh, and the scratch memory exposes um, on-chip user-managed cache, like uh, the NVIDIA shared memory on NVIDIA GPUs. Um, we need to determine the size uh, that we're going to need before launching our kernel. Um, and then there's just the two levels available. You have the small fast cache, uh, that's, or the small fast uh, um, scratch space, which is level zero, and then the large and slower scratch space, which is level one. Um, so that is all I have for um scratch space yeah if there's not any questions i guess we'll we'll hand it over to daniel um yeah thank you convert uh, uh just one thing I, I wanted to mention is that we maybe want to introduce different memory spaces for the two levels um uh, for the scratch memory since they are like conceptually different right um like some one of them represents real like scratch memory um, at least from gpu point of view whereas the other one is more like borrowed from like the global memory and there are certain architectures where we can um, take advantage of actually knowing where that is the current um, scratch memory space is kind of like uh, type erasure right 